and welcome to another edition of Press Row, joined as always by Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz. I'm Matt Finkel. Baseball and softball postseason has arrived. We've started sectional semifinal games. So with that in mind, the regular season behind us, I want to know who are your teams of the year in baseball and softball? That's a good question. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead off with a, with a softball team, and then we can kick it around. I, I'm going with Allen East softball. They're first ever NWC yeah. title. Uh, also, their first spring sport conference title in 15, 16 years, actually, 1999. So congrats to AE Softball. That'll be our first team of the year. Unfortunately, their postseason has already come right, to already an end. Yeah. So, but, yeah, yeah, great regular season for Allen East. Yeah. Uh, if we're going to go stick with softball, I'll take the easy one and go with Bath. Uh, to, to win the WBL with a target on their backs this year, it's not easy to do that, but that's exactly what they did, and they're in prime position to make another deep postseason run. So since Todd went with his alma mater, I'll go with the easy pick and go with Bath. I, I was thinking Bath as well from softball, but from baseball, I'm going with the team who's I've mentioned a couple times on this show and going to stick with them, and that's St. Mary's. And the, what the Rough Riders did this year, baseball-wise, the tip of the cap to them, they're my baseball team of the year. Well, I'll go, I'm going to go with Salina then for my baseball team of the year. Their first WBL title since the 80s. Yeah. Uh, they shared that title with uh, St. Mary's, so I'll, uh, I'll go with their neighbors. I'll go with Salina for my baseball team of the year. My baseball team of the year, I'll go to the MAC and St. Henry. We heard all season long about Coldwater and forward mm -hmm. cover, ranked number one for most of the year in their respective divisions, yet St. Henry is the MAC champ. Now, Coldwater obviously did beat St. Henry on Tuesday night, a game you could see on WOSN, but still, the St. Henry pitching staff, very strong. They kind of silently did it. Not a whole lot of people were talking about them, but they are your MAC champions, and we're going to have a real fun uh, district tournament in uh, Ada with St. Henry and Coldwater and all those teams per potentially meeting up. Yeah, OG in there, too. OG might have something to say about that. Fort Recovery, I you know, had targeted as a potential team of the year just based on how they started out undefeated and finished strong as well. And then Miller City's had a, a really nice season on the baseball diamond as well. So we'll see how those teams fare once, once the postseason gets underway. Let's go to the NBA now. Cavs' big win in Game 5 last night, taping this on Wednesday, so that would be on Tuesday night. LeBron had a huge game. If they get past the Bulls, will they have enough left in the tank to get past whoever comes out of the other series? As long as they're not getting picked up after the game for disputes with their wives, girlfriends, or significant others, potentially. <laughs> <laughs> but Kendrick Perkins matters. <laughs> he's a body. Yeah, he, he's a body that is being used to foul people, and he's an intimidator is what he is. He ought to be icing up the skates for the old Cleveland Barons is the role they're using him for. <laughs> yeah, Slap the, shot, baby. Yeah. The, the Cavaliers are, are somewhat fortunate, though, because – Who's out there in the East that really scares you? The, assuming they get to the Eastern Conference Finals. Here's what scares me in the East. David Blatt. <laughs> David Blatt. He always now, goes back to that. A lot of people have that. said he that. He keeps going back to that. A lot of people that. have said that you this look is at the, the I mean, Eastern Conference Finals. I didn't mistakes. say it wasn't legitimate. I just said those you keep going back to that. Those are mistakes that the Cavs are able to work around their own head coach to win game four and even yeah. up the series and, and you, then they win game five. You know darn good and well Chris Webber was watching that game Noticing that, going, <laughs> please get me off the hook. Get me off the hook. Well, he even said, I, I wish we had Tyron Lue on the Michigan team because yeah. Tyron Lue, the assistant yeah. coach, is the one that grabbed Platts and we don't have a timeout. Of course, uh, it, this is slightly off the subject of the Cavs in total, but back on David Blatt, can he get any credit for having a guy that's supposed to take care of him if I screw up your assistant coach? How many assistant coaches would actually have been that attentive to get it done? Because how many assistant coaches would be watching their head coach and be having their back like that? I'm well, telling you, the assistant coaches don't, don't trust David Blatt. The players don't trust David Blatt. The Cavs are in a unique situation. They could very well go to the finals because of LeBron James and despite of their head coach, I think – there's going to be an interesting discussion in this offseason as to whether or not you bring back David Blatt for next sure. year. You, you've got a, a little bit of a, of a takeout that you can say, well, we were injured in the playoffs, so even if we don't reach the finals, we can say, well, we weren't the team we thought we were going to be going into the final, going into the playoffs. But believe me, David Blatt as a Cavs head coach still concerns me. No excuse for not knowing how many timeouts you have late in and the game. And then drawing up a horrible – you're going to have LeBron inbound? That's what I was just going to say. LeBron changed the play, basically. He's like, give me the ball. You know, I'm not going to take the ball out of bounds here. And then you saw what happened. He hits the three. But in game five, that was all LeBron. Came out on fire. And then, you know, that game, Cavs were up 15 in the fourth quarter. And then all of a sudden, the Bulls are down two Cut with the four. ball. Yeah. Cut it to two. Yeah, they yeah, had the ball two. down two. And then the Cavs hold on. So – 
This series feels like it's going seven. Absolutely. I think it's going to be there very tough be for Cleveland to go win in Chicago. But a lot, what I was trying to say before is a lot of people have said that this is the Eastern Conference Finals because, you know, whoever comes out of the other series, Hawks, Wizards, this, the, the winner of this series should be the favorite. Yeah, you know, I don't want to jump to conclusions, though, the way these playoffs have gone and as banged up as the Cavaliers are, but they have LeBron. So they yeah. should be able to get past Washington or Atlanta. I have a sneaking suspicion they're going to close this out in six. I think they sense they really need it to get the rest for their guys, and I think LeBron is capable of duplicating what he did on his home floor on the road. I don't think that's really a hindrance for a guy of his stature. But, you know, moving ahead, our, our first premise here was, are they going to run out of gas? And they very well could. But it, once you get to the finals, it's a little more spread out. You get some rest built in more than even so back in the day. So I think if, if they can close it out in six, get a couple extra days before the Eastern Conference Finals, maybe get their uh, second wind again, that they, they could make it to the finish line. I just, I, I don't know if they're going to have enough to get past the Western Conference champions. I think they're sure. going to get to the finals. And I've thought all along that whoever comes out of the West is going to be the favorite in the, in the NBA Finals. I, with all they're going through, with all the injuries, nobody's completely healthy. I just don't know if they're going to have anything left once they get to the finals. It could be like the first time they went to the finals and they get swept. You know, one of the things, too, guys, is we're talking about the Eastern Conference Finals and potential of the rest there. But let's look at the West for a second and see the battles going on there. They're going to beat each other up. You know, Memphis and Golden State are, you know, the knockdown, dragout, slobber yeah. knockers. Then you've got Houston and the Clippers, who they just get mad, play hack at Jordan, and then dunk on each other is all that series is going on. Houston staves off elimination Tuesday night with a 21-point win. But Memphis has played very, very good basketball. You know, if Mike Conley doesn't have a plate in his face mm -hmm. and has to wear the Phantom of the Opera mask, that series could potentially be on the verge of an elimination for Memphis. I think Memphis has been the surprise. Even though I picked Golden State to come out of the West, Memphis has really impressed me with what I've seen with them in the last two weeks. Well, with them, it's really it's a contrast of styles. You know, the Warriors want to play their run-up-down and shoot game, whereas Memphis wants to wants to fight with you a little bit, make it a physical, more slow-paced game. And they've been able to do that pretty well. And you're right, I think a couple of weeks ago, we would have thought Golden State is way better than other teams. But now all of a sudden, they're in a quagmire with Memphis and things aren't going quite so smooth. So I think if you can get to the finals, you obviously have a puncher's chance. Clippers at home Thursday night, I think, close out Houston. The thing about playoff basketball, like playoff hockey, the, the games get a little more intense, and it's not, it's not so easy for the Warriors anymore to, to get right. the open looks they were getting. And the, same, the Cavs are seeing the same thing. All right, let's go to Major League Baseball now. Pete Rose has been working his way back into the game, and in very, now he's got a job at Fox Sports, and he's an analyst. Should he just be reinstated at this point? I think he could make that argument. And, you know, I think... When you, we've talked about this before, I, I, my reinstatement would include the fact he would not be allowed to manage a team or be a general manager or anything like that where he would influence decisions necessarily. And that could be a very well a moot point. He's 74 years old. I understand that. But I think you know it's time to just get this over with. I and mean, the man has paid his penance and all these years of not being in baseball. Now, the other thing folks have to keep in mind, the, the Hall of Fame and the reinstatement are two different planes here. They, they mm -hmm. do not intersect. So one could happen without the other as far as reinstatement. doesn't mean he's going to get in the Hall. And I think it's obvious that this process has begun for some sort of reinstatement. Twenty-five and a half years. That's long enough. I think, mm -hmm. I think it's time. It's definitely even, even though he made it worse, we all know that his uh, insistence. He broke a fundamental rule of the game. Correct. A rule that is boldly printed and is in placed in every single locker room in Major League Baseball. A rule that has been around for over 100 years. And he persisted to lie about breaking that rule. Right. That rule go, talks to the integrity of the game. Now, whether or not he was betting on the Reds to win or lose, it doesn't matter. Because if he's only betting on the Reds to win... If he doesn't bet on them to win, that meant he thought they would lose that day. So that's giving the gamblers a clear sign there as well. He agreed to a lifetime banishment. I don't see a reason why we should overturn it. Now, I do think that the National Baseball Hall of Fame and the Baseball Writers of America ought to change their rules and allow guys on the permanently ineligible list to be voted 
-hmm. let the voters speak if they don't think Peter Edward Rowe should be in the Hall of Fame because he broke a rule, or he should be allowed to be in even with breaking the rule. Right. I've always said, that, to me, I, I'm much more along your line than, than the other. If I had to pick one that's more deserved, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. he, you could make the argument he doesn't deserve to be reinstated, but the Hall of Fame is, is just being idiotic about it. The well, man's and, a Hall of Famer. And granted, the museum portion of the Hall of Fame, Pete Rose is represented. That's He's true. He's still on the list of the all-time hit leaders. Yeah. Yep. So it's just his little likeness hasn't been enshrined right. in. Yeah, he, he hasn't officially been that enshrined. Reds, that bronze, reds, hat, facials. Yeah, yeah I think the, you, the other thing that's going in Pete's favor is I think uh, you know, people that think like Mark do have even softened because, it, let's face it, the man's 74 now. He started. He softened his own stance and finally – owned up to most, if not all, of his misgive his misdeeds and you know, eventually people do soften and say, let the guy in. And something else to consider from the Hall of Fame perspective. You remember a few years ago no one was voted in. You had an empty class. Right. That's likely to happen a few more times as long as voters are still gonna punish the steroid era guys. Cooperstown lives on that weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's gonna be pressure from the Hall of Fame to allow Pete Rose to at least be voted on because if Pete Rose gets elected into the Hall of Fame, that'll be a huge weekend for Cooperstown. Yeah, they don't need anybody else. If he's there, so, it'll bring a crowd. South Southwest Ohio will cease to exist. <laughs> and, um, go to upstate right. New York. Well, and, and there's a lot of folks that don't want Pete Rose to be elected posthumously like Ron Santo yes. did. Right. Right. That's where I was going next yeah. with that. All right, let's uh, finish out with some NFL. Almost out of time, so quickly get your opinion on Deflate Gate as the punishment <laughs> has come down. Four game suspension for Brady. I prefer Deflate Gazi, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer debacle. Yeah. Uh, I think our premise is, is it too harsh? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, personally, I think it is just on the its face, but I think the NFL's got some backing here because of the track record of the club. And, you know, is it a little unfair to Tom Brady? Maybe. But, you know, at some point you've got to decide, is this a legitimate concern was it really an advantageous uh, an advantage gained is it that serious the league apparently thinks it is it, and we all know that you give a guy four figure and you're going to bust it down to two that's probably where it'll end up still a smoke screen to get people to talk about deflated balls instead of <laughs> the real problems in the nfl that yeah, could be i think it's going to get reduced down as well but the uh, the, the loss of the first round pick in 2016 and then the pick in 2017 that they lose, I believe, is a fourth. I think that first round pick hurts them right. longer. You know, that's where they're going to say, okay, we'll do decrease this to two, but the pick, the fine, everything else stays. Feel yeah. get, feel bad for the guy that's going to be was going to be the 32nd pick, who's now going to be the first pick of the second round, so the last pick of the first round. He's going to lose There's a lot of money. money. Yeah. The other thing, I was so just surprised there was a suspension at all because the NFL uses the Super Bowl champ to open up the season with great fanfare, and now they're going to do that without Brady, which. Is obviously a, a big. Who would be shocked if Tom Brady has some sort of off-season surgery and would miss the first couple of games? <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's conspiracy theorist hey, Mark he at work. Clean up. Yep. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition Jimmy of Garofalo, Press Row. Folks. Thank you so much for joining us and enjoy your games this weekend. We'll see you next time.